this is praises here today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make your custom stocks in Photoshop so this is like a quick tutorial this is gonna be over like three different ways that you can make really cool different things but uh, to get started we're gonna make uh, these type of dust lens things I, I'll show you how it goes but what you want to do is you want to start off with a um, a hard brush make it about I don't know 144 or 114 my bad and uh, start with a black background always have a black background I, I'll teach you why in a little bit but start off with a hard brush make a new layer and choose any really color that you want uh, for this I'm just gonna do something like a nice orange or something like that and then dot it around so you have uh, like a plethora of them so something like this uh, make sure that they're ni nice and pretty colors. Uh, dot them around. Cool. I have some dotted around right now. So what you want to do now is duplicate and move them around. And do something like, I don't know, something different. that like It's not like the same type of pattern. And then change the color. So let's make them, um, I don't know, let's make them um, something like, like that cool so now what you can do is blur that gosh and blur so it's a little bit looks more of like a in-depth type of picture and put that behind the layer that you already made and this is a really quick one that I like to do for multiple reasons and also what you can do is uh, you can merge this after you duplicate the back layer uh, crop or kind of like cut this the background of the black layer cut and then merge these two and what I like to do with this type of stock is add it to certain images I'll show you really quick so let's say I have this so cool and what a lot of people like to do nowadays with photography is make like these lens dust blur things I'm not quite sure what they're called but I like to use these every once in a while in photography but these actually look pretty sweet on um, certain things. It just gives a little bit more depth. I mean, if you're going to do like uh, certain themes look better with this, but you can also blur it a little bit more to make like all like the little lenses not the same, but that's a cool effect that I like to do. Uh, linear dodge is a layer mode that you really want to keep it on. You can switch it up, change up the layer modes. You can add cool effects that way. But I choose to just do like the brighter approach when it comes to like this type of uh, this type of stock. So that's number one. So I'll just leave that right here for now and do that. And this is number two. This is a really cool one that I started doing just for just multiple different reasons. But uh, you start with a pen tool and you want to do something like a little wavy wave. So something like this, alt, click on that button to make it sharp, and then connect it using that. So fill path, we'll do, we'll make the color a nice blue, nice bright blue. So cool, you have that. And now that you have that, you wanna duplicate, or what you can, add, we'll actually make another one. So then we'll add one more below it. I'll do something like this, and then and I'll make it like a little bit different. We'll do something a little bit skinnier. I did not mean to add that path. But okay, there, cool. So you have like these little doodahs right here. So another thing that you can do with these is add a gradient. And make sure that this is still black in the background. Uh, make the gradient from black to blue. This is already that way for some reason, but. So something like that. Um, so that's, that's fine. And now that that's set as a gradient, you want to add a inner shadow, but turn it to overlay, and then white. This will bring out like a little bit of a pop. It'll also uh, be good to add as a uh, a nice light source to it. Um, angle it in a correct direction. Angle it like that. You want to add a little bit of satin. I like to add satin just because it gives a more metallic look. Metallic look. My bad. Um, inner glow. Overlay 100% size doesn't really matter. Uh, satin bring that up a little bit more in size. So then you have something like this at the very end. 
So this is a cool thing that you could do, and you can also do this for multiple different things, but what I like to do is use this for uh, different stocks, such as like a clean looking uh, header that you want to use it for, and different things like that, but this, I think it looks cool. Just added to like certain things, you can add uh, more of like an in-depth type of texture, but I think that looks cool. That's what I've done. I've used this multiple times on my uh, soar headers that I've done. Something like this. So it looks kind of like more of like a, like a circularized, circularized uh, if that's even a word, but it like kind of like pushes everything into like the focus of it, into the center. But I really like doing that. And for final, uh, for like the final stack that I like to do, um, you can do, I mean, it, it's up to you guys what you guys can use. Like you can even use like an image. But um, let's say I use, I don't know, I'll just take one of these that I just used, uh, bring it back over here. And what you can do with this is you can duplicate and kind of rearrange it just a little bit. Um, do something like this. And this is a really cool effect in my opinion that you can do and uh, a lot of people don't really use it. And I'm not quite sure why but I'm going to go up to filter, distort, and wave. I really like this. I think this is really cool. This can bring out really cool and abstract looking things into your own artwork. But I don't see very many people using this. But this is a really cool way to get really abstract looking shapes. And adding this to artwork looks, I think, is like spectacular because I don't see anybody really doing this type of stuff. I mean, especially custom. A lot of people just use stocks off the internet, but if you can make your own cost custom stocks, I really think that you'd stand out a lot in whatever community that you're in. But um, hopefully, these have helped. Uh, these are like the most used that I've uh, come across. Like I, I use these very often. This whole distort effect is really cool. I use it for multiple different things. Uh, you can make really cool uh, different filters and yada yada yada. But filter gallery, also a really good thing to use. I like to use the plastic wrap. I think it looks cool. Uh, certain things bring out certain aspects of, de of the design. But uh, hopefully this has helped you guys. I just wanted to make this really quick. I've been super busy with work and found out that I'm going to Alaska soon so I'm getting ready for that and college and blah 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 but uh, hopefully you guys have learned something from this and I love making these videos super fun to me but uh, let me know in the comments what else you guys would like to see because running a little bit dry on what to do for tutorials and such but hopefully this has helped and hopefully you guys can use it to your advantage so that's about it any questions leave them in the comments and leave a like if you enjoyed so have a nice day guys